love the 80s? The 80s? Get ready to rock that tube skirt and tease that hair because it's all like Donkey Kong. The Rewind 80s Mixtape Party comes to Northcote Theatre. Join us on the dance floor with DJ Grandmaster Bates and Rewind 80s Band performing tracks by In Excess, Prince, Madonna, Wham and more. Saturday 21st October, Northcote Theatre, Northcote. Subscribe to Rewind80sBand.com for a special entry discount. It's an 80s extravaganza. Rewind80sBand.com Everybody. Hello everyone, how are you? I'm Jay Jovi. I'm Sammy Hart on your listening to the 80s montage. Hey, you this going, week, everybody? Yeah, we're doing club classics this week. We're rushing one through. Club Fucking classics, shit's going mate. down. Shit's and, going um, down. Yeah. Everyone's everyone's out there celebrating in the clubs uh, in oh, Melbourne. Following celebrating. You know, celebrating. I didn't even, I didn't even have time to put your celebration song on tonight. That's all right. I've been out every night. I've been having orgies. It's been fantastic. In celebration what about of Colling- the Collingwood. Collingwood Football Club yeah, winning. More to the point. Premiers, mate. Premiers 23. 16. Sweet 16. So we're sort of uh, record holders now, being in more finals than any other team. Wow. I was impressed. I watched the last quarter. And I must say Collingwood has changed a lot. Oh, God, yeah. Like, it, like Darcy is such a lovely human being. Oh, beautiful. And I'm like, and then the Dacos boys, I was like, really? Because they were always good guys anyway. I mean, Peter oh. Dacos was a bit grubby in the 80s, but um, the kids are amazing. Yeah, 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 phenomenal. Really, it's, it's, a, it's a really beautiful club at the moment. It's sort of... It's they've gone through the rehabilitation that they needed to, and it's it's um, I don't know people that sort of still hate on Collingwood. They're sort of hating on something old, you know. Like the new the new team is um, they're a really really beautiful team. So oh, I'm sorry, it was a really sweet win on the weekend. That was I was sort of two oh, rows it was a good back. Good game. Yeah, very two, close game. Two rows back from the boundary, just behind the with the cheer squad, and it was just phenomenal. Oh. It was amazing. Jesus. Mm, mm. Good old cheer squad. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Um, what did you think of KISS? You would have seen it live. So how was KISS? I could not believe how good they were. Right, it was okay. It was huge. Yeah, right. It was really, like, it's it's just what I expected KISS to be. Sort of Paul Stanley's voice a bit here and there, but you got to expect a bit of that at his age. Mm, absolutely. Um... I just love their stage presence, their their sense of fun and everything, and getting the kids out there and um, yeah, I loved it. They were perfect, and I sort of I read it as a bit of an omen because they're all in black and white. So yeah, that's right. I was sort of I was so excited from the opening of that um, whole day to the closing. It was amazing. Yeah, and in the eighties, any Collingwood fans were usually Kiss fans anyway. Like yeah. it sort of went together in the yeah. 80s. Yeah, yeah. It was interesting. But, look, 
of course there was probably some miming, but they're 70 something, you know? And it's not easy to perform at 50, you know nah, what I mean? That's and it. it's, it's, I think they did really well, and I think their legacy is way too big for them not to mind because if it had been a nightmare, they wouldn't have, Gene wouldn't have let that go through, you know? No, that's it. And Fucking also $3 Matt. million. Dollars. Three yeah, million dollars. Three million, M- yeah, right. Million dollars a song. A song. Million dollars a song. Yep. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, million dollars a song, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was asking Zaki because we were messaging each other. I said, "Are you excited for Kiss?" And I said, "Do you know how much they were paid?" And he said, "Maybe a million, but three millions a lot more than a million." Yeah, that's it. Uh, million, million dollars a song. Well, fuck, they deserve it. The thing is, what I've, I've watched a lot of interviews with Kiss and stuff, and the thing that I don't understand about journalism now, no one knows about music. Yeah. Like, they were asking the most ridiculous fucking questions. We put Kiss on the map. Australia fucking did that. Yeah. That is why they bow down to Australia. Yeah. And no one even fucking has a clue no. that's on the panel or whatever about... The actual legacy that Australia have given Kiss, not the yeah. other way around. Yeah, that's you know? right. And Molly yeah. Meldrum and Countdown and, and all that stuff. So I was a little bit going, oh, can't you think of something a bit better? You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. A bit more authentic. A little bit more interesting than, oh, yeah, rock and roll. Fucking, were you taking drugs or whatever they yeah. were asking Have you about. held a koala yet? Yeah, yeah, that kind of shit. Yeah. It is shit, shit, shit. Um... So Mika Mika shook Paul Stanley's hand as he was walking into the oh, He did wow. Paul Stanley Paul Stanley well the way that it happened we we sort of did the march with all the Collingwood supporters over from Olympic Park because they do this big they do this big they walk around in three big circles and then mm. they um they march across to the G. Yep. When they and they do this long march yeah I wanted to take a shortcut after fucking half of it and and go into the stadium. And so I sort of broke off. And just as I broke off, I could see some of the players being buggied over from Olympic Park to the MCG because they take yeah. them over in buggies. And uh-huh, I That's fucking, right. Yeah, we saw that. I ran after the buggies and sort of shook a few of their hands and stuff like that. Didn't get any selfies, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, but I held the cup after the game. Wow. Now, I thought that photo was an old photo, but that's a new photo, yeah? No, that was, yeah, that was after oh the game. Oh, my that, God. That, that was as I was walking out. But um, Many people can say that. No. Nah. And then um, Mika and Costa and everybody went in the other direction with the crowd. Now, mm-hmm. Paul Stanley got dropped off. Right. Like, on the outskirts and yep. sort of was holding his guitar. Like, like did, uh, it would have been What's so staged. One? Oh, the one that's now broken. Yeah, yeah. 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 He um, Which Channel Seven missed the fucking shot off. Oh, I know. I know. Unreal. Good one, fuckwits. Yeah. Anyway, no, he, no fucking it, skills. He sort of got. He sort of got. It would have been staged. He would have done it on purpose. Sort of got like um, dropped, like at a distance, so that he could walk in, and so to, so that a crowd could form around him and everything. Yeah, and of course. Like he's he's carrying his fucking guitar as if he'd carry his fucking guitar, you know? Yeah, yeah, and, um, that's right. And, um, yeah, like Mika, Mika and Costa shook his hand and, yeah, so that was pretty exciting. That's like shaking, shaking the Dalai Lama's hand, rock yeah. and roll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Incredible. Yeah. I remember yeah. my mate Bill, who was a photographer, who was just out there, oh. said to me, oh, I went and saw the Dalai Lama or he did a photo shoot with him and he shook the Dalai Lama's hand and I just went, fucking hell, that's like, how did you get to shake his hand? You know, the fucking yeah. most centred guy on the planet. Yeah. You know, and yeah. it's interesting how those opportunities can come up, you know. Yeah, 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 exactly right. But, yeah, congratulations to all the Collingwood supporters out there. I, I'm I'm really glad they won. I was really impressed with the family orientation of the boys and yeah. the fact that it just felt like a different club. I'm, I mean, I'm looking at – I only watch it once a year. Yeah. We're not really footy watchers in this household and I thought the game was amazing. I thought mm. Collingwood – we're in front most of the day, but there's a lot of handballing now in that game. I just couldn't believe how many handballs. And I think I've said this before. 
you know. Well, everyone's too fucking scared to touch each other in this game. Uh, right. At least, at least with a handball, it's kind of like safe on the receiving end. I, I don't. I, yeah, I, I feel the same frustration. There's like as soon as somebody gets tackled, or as soon as somebody sort of contests a mark or whatever, there always seems to be an injury, and you're in and fucking in front of the tribunal on the weekend. It's it's yeah yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah. Hey, also uh, another thing, Chris Lilly has been put on binge with his shows again. So <laughs> I saw that's that. That's fucking amazing. <laughs> I've been what binge watched um, Summer Heights High. Fuck man, it is Isn't wrong, but God, it's great. You know? So good. So and it good. made me think, I was thinking when I was watching it, why are we hiding this shit? Human beings aren't any fucking better from not watching this shit. You no, know what I mean? I know, I know. It yeah. does not change a fucking mentality of a person or make them not want to kill someone or stab someone or fucking bully someone watching a Chris Lilly show, you know? Like where's the proof of the stats that we're getting better as human beings? There's fucking none. So put it on, you know? We all watch that shit as kids. Yeah, you know? exactly. I reckon if he did a second series of Summer Heights High with the same characters, like stuck to those characters but did, you know, like 10 years later or however long it's been, it yeah. would rate through the roof, I reckon. Oh, yeah. The thing is the world's over it. They're starting to, um, you know, basically go, well, we don't want to do this anymore. We don't want to yeah. fucking hold our bloody – the selves, it's very restrictive and it's all yeah. about driving people apart as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, now, last week we did the gig guide and that was really fucking good because ticket sales went nuts. So maybe we should do it again. We won't be able to sing it because we're on remote. Can I do it? Can I sing it? Ready? Yeah, of course. Gig guide. Here it's we go. Special. It's special. Oh, That's sake. right. Yeah, so last week we mentioned some gigs. You guys have gone out and brought tickets. It's fantastic. So we're going to do it again because we have a new gig now, guys. We have Bird's Basement has cropped up, which is interesting. That's a, a just a, a quick turnover gig. If you'd like to come, that would be awesome. There's sitting and dinner, but it's really up to you. Lovely venue. Everyone's a bit excited about it. Um but then two days later we have Northcote, so it's a, it's a tricky one. But if you do want to – if you've already got Northcote and you feel like coming to another gig, Bird's Basement is on the 19th of October. So that's the first one we've got to add. I'm just trying to find my little page here. There it is. Um, for those of you that came to Bird's last time, it's a fun gig. You get to sit down. and It's very different to what Northcote's going to be. But it is on the 19th of October, Thursday night. So it's a school night but it's celebration time, that time of year. I thought, well, why not, you know? Yep. Uh, Saturday, the, October the 21st, we have the Northcote Theatre. That's selling well. We've got 300 people already booked. We've got two and a bit weeks left. So get your ticket for that, Northcote Theatre. Dot com is the easiest website to get onto. Uh, Shepparton, GV Hotel in Shepparton, Saturday, October the 28th. We're coming there for you. The big ALH gig, the first one back, Commercial Hotel, Saturday, November the 11th, 2023. Maddie and I are running out to do Melton with Regurgitator and Pseudo Echo, getting off stage and running to the gig to do the 11th of um of November, which will be interesting. And then there's also Max Hotel, Saturday the 25th of November 2023. And the last one we'll give you is Cardinal, Cardinia Cultural Centre, Saturday, December 2nd, 2023. That's the one that lifted in sales more than all of them, which is great. That's because I drove through there the other day. Hey? It lifted in sales because I drove through there the other day on my way oh, to Wilson's great. Prom. Yeah, beautiful area down at Cardinia. Yeah, lovely. Be- we went to a green. Mexican restaurant there the other oh, night. Oh, did you? Oh, right. Yeah. Really good Mexican restaurant. Maddie's obsessed in finding these great restaurants. Oh, wow. And it, was, and it wasn't too expensive and I can't tell you what the name is but I can't even remember but we had a nice time. So there's some nice pockets out there for sure. What were you doing out there, babe? Uh, on my way down to Wilson's prom on that awful fucking camping trip I went on. Oh, Look, was Wilson's prom is absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Um, it, like absolutely beautiful. It's like kind of, I don't know, it's like Jurassic Park but Australian. Like yeah, it's yeah, sort yeah. of really big, like big rolling hills and the beaches are fucking massive and 
Um, but yeah, Australian, like gum trees and shit. But um, lots of wildlife, lots of bird life. Um, I'll have to get down there another time, but um, it was a bit windy, it was a bit blowy. So um, I didn't get a blowy, unfortunately. But uh-huh. yeah, we'll have to go down another time when it's a bit warmer, I think. Do you know what? We want to come. My Maddie's never been. Um we were actually going to come down and join you. Oh, or not, fuck. Because Maddie had the week off and um, he really wants to go camping. He's never been in his life. And I'm like, oh, oh well, my we'll God, do you're it. missing out. It's amazing. Yeah. So we must do it. And We've got I an extra just... mattress and an extra tent and everything. Oh, so we'll do it. Great. Lock yeah. it in. How yeah. fucking great. Yeah, so yeah. we're doing Club Classics tonight. Just a quick sort of turnover. That was the Whispers, Rocksteady. Have you heard of Rocksteady before? That was a big Club Classic. I've heard of Rocksteady, but not that track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the Whispers, Rocksteady, this was the stuff that I sort of grew up with. I I think my first cover band, we did this song and it sounded incredible because we had a fantastic female um, keyboard player at the time, which was Annette Borg, who's still a friend of mine. Um, The next one's a ripper. Do you want to play some music? Fuck yeah, let's get into it. All right, here we go. Coming Very to my sexy. life, Joyce Sims. What year did that come out? 87. Wow. So uh, I've been watching this MTV 80s channel on Foxtel, which is right. amazing, and they play this a lot. Mm. And I love this song. This was one of the songs in 87 you were just finding your first love and coming yep. to my life were just perfect lyrics for your head, you know. Yeah. But not only that, it's sort of making – a lot of nuffies on TikTok are dancing to this. Like a lot Is that of right? slutty chicks. Yeah, I've noticed it on TikTok and, you know, with their midriff and just they're not very good dancers, but whatever <laughs> whatever happens, you know. I'm actually getting really close to starting my own dance fucking channel and Oh my god, the piss, do it. You know? Do it. Like just have, doing the fucking have w- shit. like have ones that take themselves seriously and then have you next to it taking the piss out of them. Maybe. That It'll would go be fucking very viral. Cool. It'll go That's viral. right. Because I just keep watching them and I'm like, why are you using Joy Sims? You're fucking horrible. But <laughs> I really love this track, the big club track, um, especially the clubs I went to in Melbourne in I was at this stage I was sort of breaking into clubs. I wasn't old enough to go into them. But this is the stuff you heard and it was really cool and sophisticated <laughs> yeah. and adult, you know, like, oh God, the subjects in the songs were fantastic. Yeah. Um but yeah, Joy Sims uh Sleeping Bag Records was the name of the um the record company, which is interesting. Yeah. And she was amazing. I think she really only had this track. 
But this was the kind of stuff I loved, you know. I loved listening yeah. to singers that were sort of unknown. It's very but, you, this track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So apart from that, that's about it. But um, Well, guys, you can look forward to TikTok uh, Sammy doing a Celeste Barber oh. and taking the, taking the piss out of all these fucking influences. <laughs> I just... I just watch it and the thing is it's addictive but you don't know why you're watching it. Yeah. And yeah. the the fucking likes they're getting are out of this world. Like, you know, it, was, uh, it doesn't make sense. And the It's thing like is, trash television. It is trash television and it's mm. not organic. It's all constructed to, you know, make oh. rev- revenue because I guess in a nightclub in the 80s when you danced really well, it wasn't. A new thing. Everyone danced really well, you know. Like, yeah, yeah. These are older people too. They're not really young people. They've been in the club scene and, and they're just getting out there and giving it one last go, you know. Yeah, yeah, With their exactly. best makeup on. Mm. So incredible. But um, I've got another club song that I really, really love that we can play now if you like just for a little Beautiful. break. Here it is. Very smooth. It is. Saturday Love and it was Sherelle and Alexander O'Neill. 1985. So this one's a bit earlier. So mm. I was really young listening to this. Yeah. And we would get it on tape of Triple R or something like a club night, like one of the radio stations. I love Sherelle. Always loved her. She had another song called Affair, which I loved. She was a dance singer as well, but a great voice. Alexander O'Neill had a track. They were quite hot around this time. He had Fake, which was a song that he put out on his own and he had heaps of stuff out at the, at the time. Yeah. But it was just really adult, you know, adult R&B and contemporary and… Sophisticated. Sophisticated sort of… Really good fun and a really sweet song, Sherelle and Alexander O'Neill, Saturday Love. Oh, and I'm also singing over the top of it and I didn't realise I was singing. <laughs> what a dickhead. And, and, what a dickhead. And I noticed that in the first track. <laughs> well. Can't believe it. Didn't ah, even think. Funny. No, yeah, cute, that, You cute. just hear these songs and you go back into the old club yeah, days and stuff. Yeah, of course. Very sweet. Um Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis, you can hear it, you know. Oh, they did yeah. a lot of oh, stuff. Oh, yeah. 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 So they were hot at this time mm. and really everything that was put out, a lot of it had to do with those guys, which was amazing. Yep, absolutely. Fun time in the clubs. Didn't have to go on TikTok and fucking ruin a song. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So uh, have you been working or what's the situation? What are you doing? 
I just had two weeks off work. Um, I had a really difficult sort of um, – Apart from game day, that was amazing. Had a difficult sort of weekend um, mm. and it was sort of stemming from work, like a lot, lots of anxiety um, that was stemming from work and then all the shit blew up and then I felt really robbed of my time. So I thought, fuck it, I'll take three days off into the week. So um, yeah. I, I go back tomorrow and I'm even considering <laughs> fucking just taking the rest of the week off. But mm. look, I'm I'm not a bludger. I, I'm not just doing it at a whim. So I'll I'll, um, I'll go in tomorrow. I'll go in tomorrow, finish off the week, and um, see how I go. But it's a big term this year. It's like a twelve week term. So it's now yeah, eleven right. for me. Yeah, Fuck that's em. right. Yeah, mm. and it's eclipse season, so everyone's going nuts. Yeah. Things are yeah. just transforming and changing, clearing yeah. out, you know. I'm directing um, a, a um, double eclipse this this uh, yes, October right. is double eclipse. Yeah. So you'll see two two moons in the sky, which is good. So you know what happened to us? Um Abby, our new drummer that's with Sue, yeah. the nineteen year old girl. I uh-huh. think she's twenty now. The poor little thing, um, her grandmother died the other day. She had a funeral yesterday for her grandmother. Oh, no. And then today she had to do national TV with oh, David great. Campbell. Yeah, how'd she go? Um, but she was a champion, man. There oh, is wow. no time in show business to grieve or do anything when you no, there's become not. a professional. You know, the it's show must shocking. go on. Yeah, that's right. And um, so she was on. I think it's Today Extra with David Campbell, and she right. was talking about being picked for Pseudo Echo, and she was amazing. So. We've got the news coming up to Queensland to film her. People are just going nuts about her, but she's amazing, you know. And um, it's funny because we went through five drummers to find her. The fourth drummer was a friend of ours and he was just filling in. But the other three literally thought they could be in the band and then the demands of these people are fucking, they're nut jobs, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And cheat sheeting and reading off an iPad, like any fucking drummer that does that after six months is a fucking tool bag. That's all there is to it. Yeah. Um, And just demanding stuff and wanting this and that and and Abby's just a dream come true, you know. So she's getting all this media attention at the moment um, because – She's just cut like she's she's come in without a rehearsal. She's just come in and done the set, and I'm. It started to make me think maybe the nineteen year olds are a little bit different to the thirty year olds. You know what I mean? There's a different generation coming up. I know that what you're are actually doing shit. You know? Yeah, I know what you're saying. There's a sort of there is a like a band of entitlement there um, oh, around the thirty year mark. I, big I get time. It. Uh, mm-hmm. Big time. I'm just thinking. Fucking what, you know? Yeah. And these younger kids are really taking life by the balls, you know? Mm, so mm. it's not only embarrassing for the other drummers that are watching this in front of them, like no one gave a fuck about you, yeah. schoolboy, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's not just because she's a woman. She's also a, an influencer really. Like she's yeah. on uh, Instagram um, and she – like people like the guy from the Doors. I better not say the guy from the Doors. Maddie will hate me. Um, the drummer from the Doors loves her, and people have watched her do covers of songs. And now she's become this professional, and it's just blown up. It's amazing, you know. Wow, that's brilliant. So I had to get up early and record that um, to see how she was, and she was just amazing for someone that's lost her grandmother. That's at, at 19, really, really amazing oh, work ethic. Gotcha. Yeah, that's phenomenal. It's amazing the resilience of the, the young kids. That's fantastic. Yeah, Good so we've her. got gigs on the weekend in Queensland. We're doing Twin Towns on Friday night. Yep. And Channel 9 News are going to be there. So I've got Great. to get off the plane, pretty much get dressed and and do the band thing. And then on we're doing Brisbane is, and that's where Abby comes from. So I think this is oh, why brilliant. there's so much excitement. Yeah. So and where are you both, playing in Brisbane, Princess Theatre? Oh, no, it's a new one. Actually, I better find it. Let me just have a look. Mm. Princess, it's, it must be a new one because. Um, uh, that'll be very exciting for her, like if she's from Brisbane. Oh. How cool. Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I love that, Brizzy. I really and love Brizzy. Yeah, so do I. They'll really get behind her as well, the Brisbane crowd. Oh, yeah, that's right. 
That's exactly right. Let me just get these Brizzy dates for you guys. It's the Redland Performing Arts Centre in Brisbane. Oh. So that's Saturday the 7th of October. Redland Performing Arts Centre. I've never heard of it but it's quite big, like large. Well, all the maybe all the people, uh, all the AFL fans and NRL fans that lost the grand final can, go, you know, go into the yeah, game if yeah, they're commiserating. Yeah, yeah. Pretty shattered, weren't they? I'm not laughing at you guys if you're listening and you fit into that category. Yeah. Hey, listen, I want to give a shout out to Balaclava in Melbourne. That's our highest wow. selling area of Australia with the big podcast. With, big with I don't the know Jews. Who you are. Great. I don't know who you are, Balaclava, but good on you. Loving that. And Balaclava, you need to come to Bird's Basement on the Thursday, 19th of October. Like, fill mm. it out, dudes. There's a whole room there. Go for it. Um, Nari Warren came in third. Sydney. Melbourne, it's amazing how things have changed a bit. Yeah, uh, yeah. Australia have been really supportive. So keep downloading your downloads and keep giving us reviews. Oh, my God, I had some Spotify reviews as well. And a couple of you have been doing the Q&A on Spotify. Really cool. We'll read them out next time. Mm. I'll have to find them. But, um, yeah, amazing. So let's do some more music for you. This is an awesome club classic as well. Here we go. Extra, extra, read all about it. I'm talking front page story all over the world. It shook up men, women, boys and girls. The headlines read, if you want to be rich, then you better make sure that you got your shit. Oh, come on. Hit it. Touch, love it. These are all club classics. They really are. I love that track. Very cool. Yeah, very cool. Very R and B. Um, Midnight Star. Fantastic that one had a bit band. of a rebirth in the noughties as well, I believe. Yeah, someone sampled it, didn't they? Yeah. Or something. Oh, it was ba- basically just put a four to the floor beat behind it and ripped it off altogether. But it, like, it was, um, it, it was huge. It was huge in the noughties as well. So. Um, yeah, sometimes I like that, sometimes I really don't. Yeah, no, I, I, I don't think I heard much about it in the 90s. It, I thought it was, I don't know, I don't know. This, in the, in I the, mean, this in the band, noughties, in the noughties, I said. Oh, the 2000s? Yeah, yeah. Oh, is that what that is? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so the group was born in 1970, uh, formed in 1976. Mm. So it's, they'd been around for a long, long time. They yeah. had a couple of tracks but I really can't remember what the other ones were, but just a cool track and 
another one I was in when I was in my first cover band. We did this as well. Yeah, like, that's right. how fucking good my first cover band was. Like this is <laughs> going back to when I was seventeen. You yeah, know, and and it sounds like this, like keyboard wise, like I'm just like, what is going on? It was just like heaven, you know. Oh wow! For me. And you've you've sung this and played live, um, this one live. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, many years like, ago. Had what silvers, kind of actually. venues would you do back silvers, then? Silvers. Silvers in oh, Silvers yeah, yeah. Track, Track Lounge when that was open. Yeah, yeah. The band was called Kaja Fair. Oh, now, yes, that's right. Kaja Fair was, oh, look, the Wogs will know it if you're, if you're my age. We did about three shows and then I think they all had a falling out. I was too young to understand but... Uh, fuck, it sounded great. Like just really – and no one was doing this stuff, you know. And then yeah. your bands in Melbourne like Patois came through and then of course Colours, which we did – which I did with Tony very early 90s, started to do the, this kind of stuff and then it just got really contemporary. But the, the club stuff was so popular mm. for people and didn't – like they – you may find them on solid gold sometimes, yeah. but you know, amazing tracks. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. Which is great. What are your um, first club tracks you can remember when you went out? Ah, uh, God. Well, I sort of started. Um, I was a kid during the eighties, so you know, like all of the eighties, I, I, um, you know, was well too little to be clubbing. But oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I started clubbing in the nineties, and I right. think the first track, getting in underage, I would have been about fifteen. The first track that played, the moment that I got into a nightclub, was "Cream" by Prince. Cream, fucking yeah. hell! I'd already yeah. been drunk a million times. Yeah, yeah. Wow, you're not the first to say that. To be honest yeah, right. with you, yeah, I've actually heard people say "Cream" by Prince a lot. Was the first club track they really remember, and which there was is like interesting. People drunk and people smoking and people getting it on and it was yeah. all smoky in there and oh, I just loved it. it. You know, I just I've been oh, it hooked. was like a jungle. Yeah, been hooked so ever exciting. since. So exciting, exactly. Absolutely. Yeah, and it's older. Like it scared me a bit going in underage because I went to a club. My first underage club I went to, believe it or not, was Lazar's in. King Street, which was full of fucking hardcore mafia. Yeah. People were really old, you know. Yeah, yeah. And I don't even know how I got in there at 17 or whatever. I have no <laughs> idea. And I just remember George Michael's Careless Whisper was really big. Yeah. And they would play that at a nightclub and then everyone would do partner dances and I remember just hiding behind the bar so no one would ask me to dance. And that was the last time I went to that club. That was a bit too mature for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and yeah. they would not second guess if they wanted to hit on you and they were 35 or something, you know. Yeah, no. They wouldn't that give wouldn't, a fuck. That would mean. It's funny that um, – it's funny how sort of because it's dark and everything – to a certain extent, age disappears as well in the clubs, you know what I mean? Yeah, well, that's right, yeah. I've sort of like picked up people well older than me and well younger than me like over the years and it's not until you realize, till you're home with them and usually you've slept with them, it's like, oh, fuck, I've got absolutely nothing in common with this person. Yeah, you know? right. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I never went that far. But that was back in the old days. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I was a look but can't touch kind of chick. I was a I was a touch and I never want to see you again. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I don't think I I probably did it once, maybe. I yeah. think I did do it once, yeah. But um I was more into the music. That was the thing when you went out to a club, you really enjoyed the music, you mm. know? Yeah. Hey, Which I was did amazing. Get- I did. Um, I did see one of our messages sent me from a new listener. Um, so Troy, our mate Troy, has li- been listening to episode one uh, one nine two, which is sex over the phone telephone yeah. tunes. Troy Reed, is it? Troy Reed, just five yeah, days good ago. Good on you, Troy. 
Thanks, mate. Just five Absolutely. days ago, he threw us a message and he just said, um, okay, you guys make me laugh. Thanks for brightening up my Saturday night. Glad you're listening to us on a on a Saturday night, Troy. Good on you, mate. Yeah. Oh, wouldn't you? I. That's what I'd do. Yeah. If, like stay at home, have a wine and download your favourite podcast. It's yeah. much more yeah. exciting. Yeah. You know? Yeah, he did real. write another one as well. I think he sent two in, Troy. Oh, beautiful. Good on him. Well, oh, the welcome, Grace Jones Troy. one. The Grace Jones one he ah, cool. on. Yeah. Oh, good on him. He nice that. one. Yeah. So, yeah, keep sending those messages through because we need to know what you like so we can keep doing shows for you guys, you know, like and just bring out the memories and all the stuff and it's just nice to hear. You know. Now, guys, Troy did um, write his comment. I, th- I believe one was on iTunes and one was on Spotify, and um, oh, wow. that is that's a really, really great thing for us because it pushes us right up in the charts. It's the comments and that kind of interaction on those streaming platforms that um, has a big difference on our chart positioning. So if you want to, I don't know, just send us a bit of encouragement, guys. Like we love the messages and we love hearing from you. Um, yeah. And it, and it really helps us out. It helps put, put the show up there. The higher we are up in the charts, it sort of gets the word out there and, That's right. and in, increases our fan base. And I don't know, you're just you're part of a, a much bigger movement, you know. I, I know like um, – um, you know, where we, where we were in our first year is nothing like where it is now um, and it's really beautiful and it's mainly been from word of mouth. So um, thank you very much, Troy. He has messaged on episode 193, which was our Grace Jones episode as well um, and just said, love you guys and I love Grace. Good on him. Thank you, Troy. Yeah, that's right. That was a great episode. Absolutely. And we will do obscure things. I mean, not that Grace Jones was obscure in the 80s, but for people that – and you're younger, that would seem obscure, you know, but it's good fun to do that kind of stuff. I'm just going to have a look at our audiences because it may have changed overnight. So Australia is our biggest audience at the moment. Americans have slowed down a bit, which is fine. It all fluctuates and, you know, comes out in the wash eventually. Um, I'm just going to look at the world. We have Australia is our highest form of listeners which is awesome because Australians can come to gigs and shows and if you need any information it's rewind80sband.com and you can come to all the gigs and you'll just have a great time. Now in front of second on the list is is the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. That's wonderful. That's a change. We've never been second in Great Britain. No, or that's Northern brilliant. Ireland. Maybe it's because of the the Grace episode because she was huge there. No, nah, there's like a thousand different that would have to accumulate over months. It's yeah. not something that just happens. So there's there's a lot of difference there. Then we've got the United States of America. Mm-hmm. Um, third, Germany comes in fourth. Canada fifth. Wow. Netherlands six, Sweden's up there, uh, France, Poland, Spain. Very interesting. Now I'm Wonderful. just going to have a look at the Australian areas are hilarious. It's hilarious. I don't even know how <laughs> this has happened. But um, we have to get to Sydney at some stage. You guys in Sydney are just asking for it <laughs> because you're like, all right. First on the list of highest listeners in Australia is fucking Balaclava. I love that. Amazing. Yeah, Balaclava, I love that. get on down to Bird's Basement Thursday the 19th of October. Get yourself a ticket for the band and come on down because you are like 10 minutes from there because it's Melbourne Central, you know, like Melbourne area. Bird's Basement is 11 Singers Lane in Melbourne. Sydney is our second one. Yep, that's amazing. Sydney, we've got to get down there yeah. um, and do something like a gig or something. Actually, I did get an SMS and an email from a Sydney person going, when are you in Sydney? And I don't really have anything booked for Sydney at the moment. Melbourne's the third one. Good on you, Melbs. We'll see you at all the gigs coming up. The fourth one is Brisbane. That's good. So, Brizzy, we'll see you at the Pseudo Echo gig this weekend. Get on down to that. The fifth one, have a guess what the fifth one is. 
Tazzy. Nari Warren. Nari yeah. Warren. You're stalking us. Fantastic. Actually, after Nari Warren is Perth, Eltham North. Now that's interesting. Eltham North. Okay. Mm. Yeah, I haven't been. Don't know. I'm, I don't know. But <laughs> Brunswick's our next area. So Brunswick, you must come to Northcote Theatre. That's awesome. That's you know people. I mean? People that saw the spots. They went through the spots. Yeah, they went to the. Well, that's right. There's only a few of them, but they're hanging in there. You know. <laughs> So, which is very cool. Um, so, before we sign off, we're going to have some trivia that I'm going to do with Leith from Tasmania very soon. Sammy, so, we've got the trivia yeah. segment coming through. Uh, remote, we can't do the sign in, so it's a bit different. But I did want to give you an idea of what we're going to be doing in the next show, which is. Videos with monologues that start the actual video. So I'll give you an example of the first song, the songs that come to mind so that have a little bit of a story and then they go into the video. So this one was one of my favourite ones in the 80s um, and it'll give you an example of the next show we're going to do. Here we go. Because you got to throw down tonight. You ready? Yeah. Well, we got to ride. <laughs> Let's get out. Let's do that thing. 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 let did y'all see how Janet looked tonight? Yeah, yeah she was kind of bad. Yeah, man, she can't be down tonight, man. It's her first gig. She got to throw down. Yeah, she can't be illin'. So, fellas, we ought to be chillin'. Pop, get there, break out the coats. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is a story about control. My control. Control of what I say and control of what I do. And this time I'm going to do it my way. I hope you enjoy this as much as I do. Are we ready? I am. Because it's all about control. And I've got lots of it. Great clip. Absolutely. Um, and the Jacksons were really renowned for that kind of monologue stuff before they started. But there's heaps. I mean, if you think back to video clips, I'm, I find it interesting that they don't really do that anymore, you know. No, And, like, nobody ever said you've got to have, you've got, like, the song's got to be part of a, a short film, you know. Like, this is a, this is something, it was an untapped art form. Like, the you, the 80s was really when film clips exploded and nobody ever said it's got to, you know, this song's got to sit within this other kind of filmic universe. Some people did it and so they're the, they're the clips and songs we're going to have a look at next week. Yeah, that's right. And some huge directors did them. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't just someone that they – like they paid – like ABC's one we're going to look at who had a four-part series mm. and um, a lot of big-time actresses and, and stuff and, um, you know, producers and directors and stuff. So we'll look at that. But uh, so I'm going to do some music trivia with Lethe. 
She's from Tasmania. She's a really huge fan. And um, here's Lethe now. Yeah, here we go. Hey, Lethe, how's Tasmania going? Hey, Sammy. Yeah, it's awesome down here. And I was so stoked to see you guys in Launceston earlier this year. Yes, you did come here in the front row, yeah? Yeah, that's right. So, <clears throat> I took my teenage son along. How old's your son? He just turned 15. And Amazing. And he loves you guys. Amazing. And what was his favourite song of the night? Do you remember? Uh, like he loves. Uh, take on me. By Aha. Yeah. So yeah. Big shout out to Ruben. Hello. He knows Hello I'm coming on, there, so. darling. Thank you for coming to our show, and thank you for your Patreon support, sweetheart. It means the world to us. Without you guys, we ain't got a show. You know what I mean. So thank you so much. So we're doing music trivia tonight, and what would you like to have trivia about? I would love to have questions about female lead singers from the eighties. Fantastic. Any typic, any different an- a country that you would prefer or just anywhere? Uh, probably US. I reckon I'm US. US. But it could be a mix. All right. So you got five questions, honey, and um, we'll start with this one. Who was the lead singer of The Go-Go's? Belinda Carlisle. Oh, my God. Here we go. Yes, it was Belinda Carlisle. Congratulations. Well done. That's one out of five. So you you got to get three to be safe, right? You're in for a DVD. Uh, DVD this week is Beetlejuice, so you're going to enjoy that anyway. We'll send that out to you if you do win. All right. I'm going to go with an Aussie band now. I want to know who the lead singer of Do Re Mi was, the lead singer of Do Re Mi. That's a tricky one for me. Mm. Do you know any of their songs? Uh, I probably do if you, were, if you want to give me a clue. So they had some great tracks, uh, Do Re Mi. Oh, what can I give you? Um, I remember lyrics. So um, Man Overboard, yeah, Man Overboard. Uh, Very yeah, good band. Yeah. yeah, really good band. Great lyrics. Like one of my favourite um, lyrics. Was it it's Deborah Conway? Yes, it was Deborah Conway. That's amazing. Two out of five, oh, that baby. Was good, yeah. That was a great guess. You know, you know your 80s because I remember when you came to our gig, you gave us some um, cassette tapes of all the the fantastic compilation albums we've been looking at on the, on the show. Yeah, yeah. Um, really embarrassing story. My friend and I used to learn the dances to Young Talent Time back in the 1980s and we actually had them recorded by her grandfather on a VCR. So, yeah. hi, Fleur, if you're listening, that was my friend. Amazing. So, you used to interpret the exact choreography from Young Talent Time? Is that... Yeah, we did. We used to do our own YTT concerts. That's a lot of work. Yeah, and who was your favourite YTT person? Uh, Danny. Yeah, Danny, Danny. yeah. Danny she did all the Madonna rocking. songs. Yeah. She did do all the Madonna songs, you're right. Yeah, and you love Madge, so that's amazing. All right, third question, sweetheart. Let me just think of one now. Female artist in America in the 80s. Who was the lead singer of Shalimar? Who oh, also had her own – her own uh, – well, she was her own thing as well. Shalimar. Shalimar. Mm, it's a tough one. Uh, she had singles out in America. She was huge. She had beautiful long black hair. She was a dancer, choreographer, beautiful girl and a model. And oh. she did some amazing. And she had a song called Looking for a New Love. Uh, Give it a guess. One. It is a tricky one. Um, maybe. Oh, I can't think of name. Um, Jodie Watley. Yes. Oh my God, you're amazing, Jodie Watley. It was of Shalimar. There you go. Awesome, oh, honey. Hard. 
It was hard, but you're very good at this, dude. I love that. Excellent. Um, because you have listened to a lot of the compilation albums, I reckon that's where you get a lot of your knowledge from because I know as a kid when we got a compilation album, you would learn a lot about different bands, you know? Yeah, that's right, um, and some of the more obscure ones. And I love your compilation podcast episodes, by the way. They're awesome. Yeah, no, we'll do another one soon, sweet, because I think it would be amazing. Um, all right, now – Another lead singer. Let's go to an Aussie. Who was the lead singer of the Divinals? Chrissy Hines. No, that's not it. Not Chrissy Hines, honey. Oh, it was... dumb, dumb. <laughs> I always get them mixed up. Chrissy Amplett. Yes. <laughs> well done. Love it. Well done, Chrissy Amphlett. Okay, so that's four out of five, baby. You've pretty much got to get one more and you've won the event, the music trivia for the day. All right, what country do you want to go, honey? I'll go US again. I don't US, all right. Any Madonna right. questions? Okay, I could give you a Madonna. Oh, there you go. Madonna's hard though because she was always just on her own, you know what I mean? All right, yeah. no, here we go. What was Madonna's first band she was in where she played drums? Wow. I'm trying to think. Like, oh, yeah, I should know that. <laughs> yeah. She was a drummer. And they went on to have huge success after she left. Oh, yeah, yeah. The Breakfast Club. Oh, yeah. You're a winner. Good on you, Leith. Amazing. Very yeah, good. You're amazing. There in the back of my mind. <laughs> yeah, no, that's right. It's in the database of your eighties, uh, of your eighties um, music mind. Absolutely. Well done, sweetheart. Well, thank you so much for being on this week's music trivia segment. That was and awesome. for Love being a Patreon. You know, like you guys are amazing, and we hope you enjoyed tonight's show and enjoy listening to it. And say hi to your little one. And we're going to see you in Launceston. You've already brought your tickets, haven't you, babe? Yeah, that's right. Front row again. Uh, Can't wait. Fantastic. That's great, honey. Um, what did you like about the show? Uh, I just love how many different artists, how many different songs. You covered. Yeah, we it do it. Yeah, awesome. that's right. We don't suit one. We suit a whole lot of other things. Yeah, no, that's amazing. Um, so, yeah, we will see you in Tasmania, Launceston. How is the weather down there at, at the moment, sweet? Yeah, it's a bit overcast today, actually. It's yeah. a bit cold. Um, yeah, it is know, a bit when cold. It, when it looks cold down here, it's actually not as cold as, say, it was like in Melbourne at the same temperature. So it's not, you know, it's pretty mild. Yeah, no, no, I can't wait because I was actually born in Hobart so I know that cold, that coldness in Tasmania. It's a stingy cold as well. It's quite stingy, you know. Yeah. So we will see you at the Princess Theatre Launceston Saturday, April the 6th, 2024. You've already got your tickets. Thank you so much. Can't wait to see you in the front row. We feel like we know everyone when we go to Launceston. It's incredible. Um, if you do want to get tickets, guys, you can go to theatrenorth.com and get your tickets or rewind80sband.com, one or the two, and there'll be a link with all our tickets and we will see you then. So, so thank you so much for being on the trivia show, darling, and we will catch up with you. We'll do a trivia again with you later on down the track. That'd be awesome. Oh, that'd be fantastic. All right, lovely. Thank you so much. See you soon, thank you. babes. Bye, darling. See ya. Bye. Bye. Awesome. Good on you, Leith. Fantastic, Leith. Good on you. You're a big supporter of ours and you make us feel special every time we come to Tassie. So good on you. Absolutely. And we will be back, Taswegians, in April, which will be amazing. Over 100 people brought their early bird tickets, which is great. So they got some cheaper tickets. Um, Now, just remember to get your Northcote tickets. You've got two and a bit weeks to go. Get them online. They may not be at the door. Um... And we're getting Grandmaster Bates ready to go and it's all going to be a good thing. But, yeah, all that's of it. Our, all of our listeners in Balaclava, Nari Warren, Melbourne that we mentioned before, get to Northcote Theatre, guys, on October 21st. You've you got to come. It's going to be the best night. It will be. It'll be amazing. And the theatre's amazing, you know. Um, I was doing some work towards it today and organising the DJ booth and the 
uh, the band stage and, and stuff and the screen and all this stuff. So we're going to have a fabulous night down there. And they're really, really lovely people and they're right into it. You know, they love their 80s and it's great. And when I did see the labyrinth, I'm glad I went down because I got to see all the system and how it all works. So it's going to be amazing. The lighting is in just incredible at that joint, you know. I can't wait. This is going to be really good. I can't wait. Oh, that's brilliant, guys. Now, please uh – All our listeners, thank you very much for your support, guys, all of our subscribers and our Patreons all around the world. Everyone else, please like, share, rate and review and become a subscriber. It costs you nothing. If you love the show, you can become a Patreon for as little as $1.50 a month and for $10 a month you get the extra episodes, guys. That's right. I want to give a shout out to Ange who upped her Patreon membership during the week. Thank you, Ange. We love you. Oh, good on you, Ange. Uh, Which is amazing because her support is valuable and and all the other. And Ange did music trivia the the second night we started the the trivia. Um, You can Patreon by going patreon.com forward slash the 80s montage podcast. Feel free to give us as little as you want, as much as you want, it all helps at the end of the day. Keep the lights on. Certainly does, guys. Good on you. Thank you for listening to the show. G'day to everybody around the world. And if it's music mateys. Or cool shit from the 80s. We're going to talk about it. Unreal. Unreal.